So in this part, we will look into page cache, uh, which is one of the important components of virtual file system that enables, uh, that allows Linux kernel to provide almost like in-memory speed access of files. So one of the main uh, reason why we have page cache is to reduce disk IO. So, so instead of making every write that we make uh, to the disk, so page cache allows different processes to use the same file. And that way all the writes could be like streamlined by the operating system and can be blocked like a uh, group together and send to the device, right? So instead of uh, sending requests to the device every for every write, so Linux page cache allows Linux kernel to like group all these write requests together, group all the writes that are made to the same block together and finally send these requests to the device. Okay. So page cache, uh, in simple words, these are memory pages, like right? these are uh, like memory frames that are maintained by the kernel for storing contents to or from the disk. So whenever we do uh, file access or like access from a disk block, it has to go through page cache. So we never access the block of the device directly. We always read the block into the page cache first. And then uh, like op applications, they use data that is in the page cache. Okay. And that's why like once the file is open, once we read, consequent reads are almost very fast. Okay. You might have noticed this thing. That is because of page cache. So when we have page cache, file IO is like, now we need to take care of uh, page cache, right? So reads will be all serviced by the page cache. So whenever read happens, we'll look into page cache and if the corresponding page of corresponding block is present in the page cache, then we serve from the page cache. And it also allows operating system to do certain optimizations where the operating system can actually read ahead certain blocks from the file, like from the disk and put them in page cache so that uh, applications can be faster. It can do read ahead. And also writes operating system now, no need to worry about writing every write to the disk, right? Because you can imagine we would be like an application when it opens a file, it would write many times like it would uh, it would do some things and maybe write to the file like multiple times before actually closing the file okay. so page cache allows the allows operating system to provide this amazing performance of writes where the writes will be as if they're like you're writing to the memory not to the disk right because page caches are in memory one disadvantage of having page cache like when it comes to write is since the content is not exactly synchronized to the disk, there is a chance of losing data. So, so that means when you actually do a system call, right, it's not exactly atomic. It's not exactly as you are writing to the disk, you are writing to the page cache. So in order to allow applications to flush the data, operating system provides a system call called sync that, uh, that allows applications to tell the operating system to flush all the data in the page cache to the disk. Okay, that way, once sync happens, you can be sure that the data that you have written is, al is actually onto the hardware, onto the disk. Okay. And so using, using page cache also allows, so the write when multiple processes are making writes to the same file, so here, instead of sending multiple requests to the disk, all the requests go to the page cache. That way, all the writes can be grouped together and they can be sent to the disk once both the processes finish, right? So, so when we do a read system call, like when application does read, so kernel actually looks for that particular block in the page cache. If the block is not present in the page cache, that is when kernel actually reads the block 
from the actual disk and then puts them into page cache and then gives data to the application from the page cache. Note that uh, read never read always sees page caches, but not the disk blocks. Okay, so this allows this also provides this nice interface for uh, Linux kernel, like nice virtual interface, virtual file system where all reads they just need to worry about looking into page cache. That's it. So maintenance between page cache and disk block will be taken care of by other modules. So page cache is uh, it's a lookup table, but uh, if in reality we use Radix tree, like if you have uh, taken data structures, you would know. And so here for each file or rather like inode uh, has address space. So every for each inode and offset. So we have a corresponding page in the page cache. If, if that uh, if, if that block is present in the page cache, you can look up in the Redix tree whether that particular block is present in the page cache or not. Okay. And for each page in the page cache, we also have reference to the file to which the page belongs or process because uh, along with the files, page cache is also used for uh, processes when like when they're using swap space, when they write to something, instead of going directly to the disk, uh, directly to the swap space, which is in disk. So those writes go to the page cache because at the end, swapping to the disk is also a write to the disk, right? So that's why like, even when we make write to the disk or, or like write to our memory, and if that memory is not back, if, if that memory, uh, needs to be swapped out, it doesn't go to the disk directly, but rather it, it just goes to the page cache. And for each page in the page cache, we also maintain the offset of the file to which it belongs. So another important system call that, that is provided by Linux is a map, okay? You might have seen like many programs or like when you do a trace of uh, normal program, let's say cat, for instance, if you do, like there will be many calls made by cat, especially MMAP calls. Okay. So MMAP allows an application to bind its virtual memory to file blocks. Okay. So the simple code is shown on the slide. So here we are opening file like hello.txt. We are opening in read write mode. So how can we access the contents of hello.txt? In a regular way, we can just call read system call using FD and then read uh, read the file at the corresponding offset. The other way is to use MMAP syscall. So here, what we are doing is we are mapping first page of the file from offset zero to, to some free available virtual space of the process. Okay, Once the MMAP succeeds, so reading and writing to a file becomes accessing memory. So now we, for, every, for every read and write, we don't need to do syscall at all. And we don't need to, and this also saves a lot of time for the application because now application can avoid uh, the syscall time for every read and write because it can just write to the memory as if it is writing to file. So, and finally, like once uh, similar to uh, writes, MMAP, like the changes that you do M, uh, through MMAP are not synced to the file system. So you can use msync, again, uh, a function in libc that you can use to sync or like uh, to flush the changes made by the MMAP, like flush the changes made by, made to the address that you have mapped through MMAP. And so when we have page cache, like MMAP works similar to read. So when we do MMAP, Linux kernel searches in the page cache to see if the block corresponding to that offset is available in the page cache. If not, we get from disk and that's how, and then once we get the page from the disk to the page cache, we then allocate a virtual address 
in the application in the application space and then map that virtual address to the page cache block to the uh, to the same page to which page cache is also mapped so mmap this allows mmaps to provide various advantages over traditional uh, regular file io okay because now read and writes to file doesn't need any system calls once a map is done once we get the address to which the file block is mapped so we, ju we just access the file as if we are accessing the memory okay the interface is same and it also allows us to interpret certain file data as programmatic structures because we we map the file contents exactly into the memory so let's say we have stored or if you have serialized certain data into a file mmap allows us to deserialize very easily right because you just read the data you mmap into some address in your virtual address space then you just cast that address to a structure that you have serialized before okay deserialization becomes very easy whereas in case of file io you now read to each byte and then create a structure and then put them into the structure so on and so forth which is very complex okay so nmap makes uh, this like accessing structured data very very easy okay and uh, another advantage is any writes now and they just go through they just go to the page cache okay so any writes that we make since virtual address of the application is also mapped to the same page as page cache so all the writes that we do will directly go to the uh, page cache page that belongs to that particular disk block and it also allows us to take a good advantage of dynamic paging so when we do mmap so that is when the file or like the disk block that is needed will be fetched into the a page cache so it allows us to take advantage of dynamic paging now one disadvantage is there are uh, extra page table entries because even though know that like uh, even though page cache and the virtual address of the like virtual page of the application they map to the same physical page we still need two page table entries okay and imagine if there are 10 different processes that are uh, that 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 have done a map to the same file block then we need like 10 different page table entries okay and things uh things might get a bit tricky when we have io errors like say let's say when the disk fails when we have mapped with a certain blocks to the page cache like our certain blocks using mmap then the writes could be tricky because we cannot rely on uh, like we cannot rely, we cannot assume that the, when we do mmap or like the memory that we have written using mmap is all written to the disk, especially when we have like uh, IO errors, like when the disk fails or when there is like transient errors in the uh, disk. So we cannot, we cannot have that assurance. I mean, the case is same with file IO, but in case of mmap, it's, uh, uh, you cannot anticipate that like, uh, like you, you may not know this quite late in your process. Whereas in case of uh, traditional IO, you will, you might know when the write fails at that time itself. So, uh, file advantages of file IO is it's it it has universal interface. So mmap may not you can you may not be able to do mmap for all the files. Whereas file IO you should be able to do for all the files. And one disadvantage of file IO is now the writes has to do three, any write that we make now has to do like there are three, three transfers. One application now has to write to some buffer which is in the application address space. And then now that data has to go to the page cache. And finally, when we have to evict the page of the page cache, it will go to the disk. Okay, so the, there are at least two different data moments or rather three different data moments like first the application to buffer and buffer to page cache and page cache to disk whereas in case of mmap application to page cache and page cache to disk block that's it okay so this uh 
this concludes this lecture. So in the recitation today, we will actually go through various examples to see how a map on like virtual file system works. And we look at uh, maps of a process to see how like how a map is used by Linux kernel in like in loading a process. Thank you.